we're going to continue on that lesson today, and maybe another week or two, the Lord willing, before I'm, I want to go into a very special series of lessons that God has laid on my heart that I've been promised you for a while yeah. about the setup and how God uh, wants to uh, organize. The, I use the word organize, it's not really the right word, but how He wants to conduct His church uh, like the book of Acts. Mm -hmm. I believe the end is going to be like the beginning. Yeah. Right. Yes. And I think, I don't think, I know yeah. God is going to set up His house again yes. the way it was yes. and the way it needs to be. Yeah. If we are going to be ready and prepared for the coming of the Lord, we've got to be walking where His will says walk yes. Mm -hmm. yes. and be what He wants us to be yeah. and do what He wishes us to do. Yes. And so um, we're going to be talking about that. But right now this is a very important uh, aspect and part of our journey is to learn about the spirit of discernment. Uh, when I started out in the ministry at a very young age, in my 20, early 20s, I remember asking the Lord the question, which of the gifts is the most important for me to have? And I'm not talking about, of course, the gift of salvation and the gift of the Holy Ghost and the gift of His name. These are all gifts. Our journey began with gifts. Don't forget it. Don't ever think you're too big for a gift. Amen. Because, you know, God gives us gifts for a reason. And all of the gifts that God gives us, He intends for us to grow in. They, intended, they are intended for our growth, but they're also intended for us to grow in the gift. Mm -hmm. So that the gift becomes interwoven into part of who you are. Mm -hmm. It becomes part of your character, your, your nature. It becomes you. It becomes a part of your spiritual existence, your spiritual stature, as it were. Thank you, Lord. So the gift becomes a, a tremendous part of your uh, growth experience. And this is why Paul said in 1 Corinthians 12, in verse 1, we read this last time, Now concerning spiritual gifts, I would not have you ignorant. Uh, just take note. Every time the Spirit of God says that, take note. I would not have you ignorant. The Corinthian church, it says it, came behind in no gift. They had all the gifts. But they were ignorant of them nonetheless. Hello? They had all of the gifts operating in their church. But yet, they were babies. Paul said, I can't even feed you with meat. I've got to give you milk. Because there's still envy and strife and war and all these things among you. Yes. He said, you call yourself spiritual? No, you are carnal. Yes. As long as these things are going on among you, you are carnal. And I can't feed you as spiritual or as mature. So he said, you are still babes in Christ. But yet they had all the gifts. However, they were ignorant of their operation. They were ignorant of their purpose. They were ignorant of what God gave them to the church for. And I would dare say that we are pretty much a Corinthian church today. Yes. Got a lot of things going on. Got, got a lot of gifts. But oh, how ignorant we are. Yes. Yes. Somebody say yes. Of how God wants to use these things for the edification of His people, for the upbuilding, for the strengthening of the body of Christ. To help us come to the place and the fulfillment of His purpose and plan for our lives. I need every aspect of God, not some. Amen. I need everything He wants to give me, not some. I need all seven lamps of the candlestick, not only three or four or five or six. I've got to have all seven. Yes. And if you take all the bowls, knobs and flowers, and bowls, knobs and flowers, and bowls, knobs and flowers, and all 66 of them, and you remove only one. Just remove one. What happens? Right. The whole thing loses its form. Uh, somewhere, one light is going to go just from moving one. Yeah. Take one of the branches. Remove one of the, whist, uh, uh, the bowls, knobs, or flowers of the candlestick. Just one anywhere. In the link, the light goes. Just move one from the, on the other side and the light goes. This is how what has happened to the religious world. This is what has happened to the church. They have removed so much of truth. Yeah. 
Yeah. And the night so to shine. So much, somebody shout. Of wisdom, I mean the lamps of re the, the lamps of revelation have just gone kabunk. Yes. Well, we still got the candlestick, we still got free lights. Can't you see? We got light, we're walking in light. And not realizing that it's only portion of light. It's not the complete light. You say, is that even possible? Oh yes, it is. That's why we got the thing called the Holy Ghost. Yes. <coughs> to lead us and guide us into some truth. Oh, oh, I'll say that word again. Oh, I did not hear it. Oh, oh, truth. Thank you. <laughs> Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Yes. To lead us into all truth. Yes. So you can have all truth. Mm -hmm. As long as you keep yourself in this right place and position before God. Mm -hmm. Thank you Lord. It's, heart, it's disheartening. It breaks my heart. I, I, I fear and I tremble. I go before the Lord and it's just like I'm embarrassed to be a part of the religious world yes. that is chopping up the Word of God left, right, and center and ripping that away and throwing this oh, yes. yeah. and not wanting this and oh, that doesn't mean yeah. anything and this is not for yes. us today and, and this, is, this is nonsense and that's old time and that's right. future yeah. time and that's their time and that's for her and that's for him and that's for the other church and that's for someone else and that's for another dispensation. We chop it all up and throw it away, and there's not much left for us to look at and say, "Well, this is for us." But that's what they mean. That's what they want. They don't want that responsibility of the revelation of the Word of God. Let's rather walk in ignorance than to walk in light and in truth, because that gives you a responsibility. All right. So, uh, in uh, yes. Chapter 12, uh, let me just read again, beginning in verse 4, read quickly. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. This is what I'm going to be teaching on down the road. This is so powerful, it's like mind-blowing. You're going to love this. Diversities of gifts, same Spirit. Differences of administrations, same Lord. Diversities of operations, but the same God that works them all. Division, diversity, look at all the... He, he wasn't talking about uniformity. He wasn't talking about everybody acting the same, looking the same, singing the same, praying the same, doing the same. He was talking about differences. That there are differences. I, I, don't let me go there. That's for another time. Woo, but I can hardly help it. I'm just so excited about it. Hallelujah. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit. Hello? Yes. All these manifestations and these gifts from the fire and the Spirit of God is given to profit with all. It's given for an overall profit of your own individual life and the life of the body of Christ. Hallelujah. And there are diversities. Wait, wait. Verse 8. For to one is given the Spirit of the word of wisdom, to another the Spirit of uh, or the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, and to another discerning of spirits, and to another diverse kind of tongues, and to another the interpretation of tongues. So I was telling you, the first gift the Lord ever put on my heart to ask for in the early stages of my ministry was the gift of discernment. Because when you have discernment, you are able to determine, you are able to judge. Not in your carnal judgment, but you are able to discern and to perceive the motive, the thought process, the intent, the spirit behind words, actions, deeds. You are able to understand beyond the realm of just carnal, physical elements around you in the realm of the Spirit of God what is going on around you what is going on in front of you what is even going on behind you the spirit of discernment is a powerful gift and I personally believe it's one of the most important gifts that God wants to give us and have uh, manifest in our hearts and our lives in these end times 
Because it's in these days that the spirit of deception has gone out into the church yeah. and is wreaking havoc yeah. in the body of Christ. Yeah. And if we don't wake up yeah. and ask God to give us eyes to perceive yeah. and to stop. Yeah. This flood of deceit that is coming to carry away God's people into death and into bondage. It's happening before my face. Believe me, saints, it is happening. Going on everywhere. Now, I want you to take note that the gift of discernment was mentioned immediately after the gift of prophecy. And there is a reason God put it there. Prophecy and I thank God for all the people that God has given the gift of prophecy to. Amen. However, prophecy is one of the most destructive yes. gifts in the body of Christ. Amen. Or the misuse, I should say. Yeah. The misuse yeah. of the gift of prophecy is one of the most, if not the most destructive gift in the body of Christ. True. It has destroyed more lives, yes. more churches, Amen. more families, more marriages, more homes than any, anything, oh, uh, couple, oh, oh, anything and more ministries mm -hmm. than anything else within the body of Christ. The uh, gift of prophecy or the misuse of the gift of prophecy has been uh, misplaced. And it is often placed in the place of, or to replace, the Word of God. Yes. The gift of prophecy is very often put above the Word of God. Well, if they said that and thus saith the Lord, then who cares about that? We've got to understand that the Word of God is the ultimate authority. It is the highest authority. the highest authority of all. There is nothing higher and lower. It upholds everything. It created everything. It sustains everything. You cannot come with a gift of prophecy or a prophecy uh, that um, squishes down, as it were, anything that is truth and call it God. That is not God. But it has been used this way. No wonder uh, the Spirit of God put the gift of discernment immediately after the gift of prophecy. Because prophecy, uh, uh, of how prophecy is often used. It is used to lead people astray. It is used to usurp authority. Hey, I've been a, this is the sixth church I pastor. Right now it's the smallest church I've ever pastored. It's not going to stay that way. Praise God. Amen. That this little this little church right here is the sixth church. In the other churches in different countries on four continents, one thing that has risen up every single place, and that is someone in the midst who likes to usurp authority. Amen. And do you know how they do it? Prophecy. Right. Ah! Yeah! Yes. Prophecy. They step, you say, yeah, but brother, they're powerful. They're powerful in the spirit. So was Elijah. When he killed 450 prophets of Baal and 400 prophets of the groves, 850 prophets he slew under the anointing and the power of God. And immediately thereafter, he runs away from Jezebel. So was Peter in the day. He was powerful and in the spirit when he said, Thou art the Son of the living God. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And immediately thereafter, he rebuked Jesus for saying he was going to the cross. That's how easy it is to cross the line from being in the spirit to in the flesh. Hello? We can have powerful gifts. That doesn't mean that you are always in the Spirit. Right. This is why we need discernment. Yes. 
Because you can look at a person one day and say, man, look at that gift, look at that anointing, look at that power. And because they had it that day, you will follow them blindly the next day. Don't follow me blindly. I don't want you to. Examine. Examine what I teach you. Go to the Word of God. Look for yourself. I don't want you just going like this and say, oh, well, he was anointed last Sunday, so he's got to be anointed this Sunday. Uh -huh. That's not the way it works. I can be just as much in the Spirit this Sunday as I can be in the flesh next Sunday. I'm just warning you. <laughs> well, that's a strange warning for a pastor to give his people. But I'm telling you how important this gift of discernment is. Yes. Thank you, Lord. To the, the, the Bereans, is that what they call the Bereans in the book of Acts? They were more noble than all the other Christians and churches round about. Because when Paul uh, came to them, or Timothy, whoever it was, uh, came, they examined. Yes. The Word of God to see if these things be so. Yeah. I love it. Yes. Hallelujah. And they were commended for that. Not that they were going around stretching. Eh, I'm going to see if he's wrong. I'm going to see if he's right. <laughs> <laughs> Not that spirit. Because that's a wicked spirit. Yes. There are some people who just, they, they, they want to trip you up. Right. So they look for any little thing. Well, what you said last week. And, you know. And, and then, <laughs> it's true. That's true. Don't do that to me. I don't want to push you anymore. Thank you, Lord. But they, they, they went to the Word of God for the, the issues that were being discussed. Okay, what do the Scriptures say? Yes, we see. This is so. And they were so readily then able to join themselves yes. to the Word of God. Oh, it was being preached because it witnessed oh, yes. through the Word and through the Spirit. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, I love it. Yes. Yes. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. This gift is so important. I cannot, I cannot stress to you how, how my encouragement for you to go before God and ask Him for this gift. And if you already have it, ask Him for another dose. Yes. Ask Him to open another can and cause you to drink freely from this gift because there's nothing more important than these this day and age for us to have operating in our life. And it's not that, see, even the gift of discernment can be misused. Hello? Yes. Yes. Mistreated and misplaced. Yes. I, know a, a, I know of, I don't know, but I know of a pastor in California. And his whole ministry revolves around discernment. See, don't ever follow a ministry that revolves around something. Yeah, I like that. Except Jesus. Yeah. Yes. And Him only. Yes. Thank you, Lord. But when, when ministries start taking out a thread from the Word of God, and then they build a wall around this line, or this precept, or this scripture, or this verse, or this word, and they say, this is our ministry, this is what we are focused on doing, then I would run. Because you are limiting God to uh, just that. But this guy has a ministry called deliverance. <laughs> Everything's deliverance. And he chooses in his congregation people that he prays over and imparts to them the gift of discernment. And when new people come into the church, or they have new people uh, come into certain kind of ministries, these individuals, they will go to people and they will... Uh, take their hand like this. Hey, come here, Josh. This is what they. This is literally what, what they will do. I'll take the hand and go. God bless you, brother. Oh, wow. and they're looking in the eyes. You know what they're doing? Discerning. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't think you're called to this ministry. <laughs> <laughs> He's mildly called. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Greatly called of God. Oh, yes. You see, it becomes an abuse. Mm -hmm. Some people who think they have this gift, they start looking for things under every rock and table and crevice and, you know, try to find a, a spirit and a devil and a demon somewhere. The gift of discernment, do you, you want to know how the gift of discernment works? Like breathing. Mm -hmm. You don't think about it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. you don't awaken it. It awakens. Oh, yes. 
Mm -hmm. It awakens you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You don't go digging for things. Yeah. Things become an awareness. Wow. It comes to the surface. Mm -hmm. It's something that God puts inside of you and it, it stirred up whoosh, oh. in the moment of God using it in your life. Am I making sense? Yeah. Yeah. So don't get unbalanced in anything. This is, this is a problem in the body of Christ. People get a hold of a vision of something like, this is, oh, this is it. Oh, man, now I found it. This is it. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> and then the whole life and world is all about that until they hit something else. And then yes. they move on from that and they forget that it's no longer part of their life. Mm -hmm. Get this thing established in your life and it's like breathing. It's just there. Yes. It moves and it operates it, bring, it gives caution, it gives awareness, it gives judgment, mm -hmm. it gives perception, it separates, it divides. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Go to 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. <clears throat> and verse 1 says, Beloved, believe not every spirit. Right. Oh man, that also is yes. awesome. Yes. Believe not every spirit. In other words, something can look good, it can yes. feel good, it can be hairy, fairy, flaky, goosebumps, you know, <laughs> and, and who knows what else you may feel or experience in this. Oh man, I wish I could teach on the difference between feelings and faith. Oh, right. hey. Praise God. <laughs> This, this, this. <laughs> Sister Tony's like, ooh, teach it. Oh, yeah, we do need to learn more about that. Yes. The, 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 this world, this church world that is in operation today, does not walk by faith. Right. They walk by feelings. Yes. Yes. Hi! Oh, hi. So much of their decision making or their actions, reactions, their choices, in their life is based on a feeling, mm -hmm. not on their faith in the Word of God. This is a shallow age that we live in. Mm -hmm. The church is, is a shallow church. Mm -hmm. We have lost our depth. Mm -hmm. Jesus says, go out and launch out in the deep. Yeah. Get out there in the deep place and put down your net, because yeah. that's where I'm going to give you some meat. <laughs> that's where I'm going to give you some... <laughs> Where I'm going to give you some substance. Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. The people live by their feelings. He's, he's saying here, don't believe every spirit. Spirits come very much with feelings. Mm -hmm. Feelings, you can feel, it can even feel good. Doesn't mean it's God. No. Thank you, Lord. Discern. Try the spirits. This word try means to test. To prove and to approve. It means to examine and to discern. Hallelujah. Uh, run with me to 1 Thessalonians 5. First Thessalonians chapter 5. It says at verse 19, quench not the Spirit. Okay, so we don't want to do that. You don't want to quench the Spirit. You don't want to squash it down and put out the fires because you're so high and mighty and think that you know it all. That there is such a fine line, people, listen to me, between walking in the flesh and walking in the Spirit. It's unbelievable how quickly we go from one to another many times in one service. In your prayer time with the Lord. Yes. It's unbelievable how quickly we get into the realms of carnality. Yes. And people think that walking in the flesh has to do with just, you know, sex or, or lust or... No, oh. laziness can be walking in the flesh. Yes. Yes. Hello? Yes. That can be just as much carnality as anything else can be. Thank you, Lord. So, he says, quench not the spirit, despise not... Prophesying. So it's, this is not about despising when people bring a word of prophecy, but prove yes. all things. Woo! Shahad of Test them. This is the same word as to try back in John. Prove it. Test it. Approve it. Examine it. 
Look at it through the eyes of the Spirit of God. This is where people get misled and led astray because one moment it can be you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, and the next moment absolute carnality and flesh. But you keep on following blindly because the truth was spoken at first. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So, oh. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Are you, are you with me? Yes. We are in this day of caution. And I'm not asking you all to go crazy. I'm not asking you all to start, you know, carnally judging. You know, the, the misuse of the gift of discernment is judgment. When you start to judge everybody. Yeah. And judge them, well, they're not right. They're not right. Did you hear what they said? That wasn't right. Did you hear how they prayed? That wasn't right. Well, my spirit felt that. <laughs> and you can be just as much in the flesh as they were. <laughs> Hallelujah. Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. But to stay yielded and surrendered yeah. and tapped in to the Spirit of God in your personal life. Not go looking, not go browsing around, not go seeking for it. But allowing that Spirit to move in you. To give you eyes to see. To give you perception. Glory be to God. To know what is God and not God. And then when you have received that perception, test your own perception. Hallelujah. Put your own revelation to test. Woo! Glory to God. In your Bibles, if you would please. Let's go to Luke. Chapter 21. Luke chapter 21. And let's see one of the great reasons why this gift is so important today. Why am I encouraging you to ask God for this gift? Paul the Apostle said, covet the best gifts. In the last verse of 1 Corinthians 12. Covet. You know what it means to covet? Crave it. Lust after it. That's what it means. Desire it so much that you're lusting after. Desire the best gifts. That's why I asked God that day when I was in my 20s. What is the best gift for me? What is the best gift that I can ask for? And I still say, from my perspective and my experience, the gift of discernment has saved me many times. It's so easy to be led astray by appearances. It's so true. Those that come wolves in sheep's clothing, you follow the sheep clothing, not realizing that underneath there is a wolf. The truth that is given out there, that is packaged, or the lie, the deception, that is packaged in truth, this is deceit. There's, there's wrapping paper. It looks beautiful. It's got truth written all over it. And you're like, well, that's the truth. I see that in the Word of God. But underneath, there is a man-made theology. Or a man-made tournament. Oh! Praise God. You've got part of it taken directly from the Word of God. And then another part that is coined up in the mind of a man. Wow. That is called oh, deceit. That's cool. ah! Thank you, Lord. The religious world is full of it. The pulpits in the USA and around the world are full of this kind of deception. Mm. Truth packaged in error. Or error, rather, packaged in truth. And this is what Jesus warned against. He said at the end times there would come false prophets, false apostles, false Christs. False anointed ones. Who would say, this is the truth. He's here. He's here. Let's go. This, this is the way. Don't follow them, he said. And when you don't have a discerning heart to perceive and to see, to realize what is not God, That's right. you can get sucked up so easily because, you see, the most vulnerable people to, de to deception are hungry people. Yes. No. No. The most vulnerable people to follow and fall into the trap of being led with a ring in their nose of those who are hungry for God because they're hungry for God. He said, oh, you're hungry? Come on, I'll lead you to the trough. 
and your hunger and your desire to do yes. His will yes. and to follow Him and to desire Him is so great yes. that you just follow blindly because you want to be right before the Lord. Oh, yeah. Not realizing that that is correct on one side of the scales. But remember, there's always the other. Don't ever forget that. I will say it again and I'll say it again. There's always another side. So you're hungry. That's wonderful. You, you desire God. That's wonderful. You want all that He's got for you. That's wonderful. But test the Spirit. Test it. Don't quench it. Don't despise it. But test it. Put it under the microscope of truth. Hallelujah. And is God in this? Is this something that will set me free? Uh, the Lord has always told me, Son, you can know what is truth because truth will set you free. Yes. Uh, glory be to God. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Yes. Truth liberates you. Truth does not put you in a cage. Yes. Truth, yes. truth does not bring you into bondage. Yes. Truth will set you free. desire for myself. It's my desire for God's people. Yes. Truth. Yes. Let's long for truth. Yes. Let's desire and hunger for truth. Thank you, Lord. Thank you Jesus, because truth will liberate us yes. to be all that God has chosen and called us to be. Whatever that may be. Mm. Hallelujah. He may have called and chosen you to be a toad. Mm. Be a toad. Amen. And enjoy being a toad. Yes, yes. And I will encourage you as a toad. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, will, I won't get close to you, but I'll love you. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> no, I'll get close to you. And during foot washing that. <laughs> Praise God. Okay. Are you in Luke with me? Yes. yes. Chapter 21? Yes. All right. Uh, I want to read. Let's go. Let's see here. What do I want to read? Yes. Verse 7. And they asked him. This is the disciples asking Jesus. Master, but when shall these things be? In other words, about Jesus had just finished preaching a lesson on the end times. And all the woes and the wars and just the, the various things that are going to take place during the end times. And so they asked him, saying, Master, when shall these things be? And, and, and what is the sign? Uh, what sign will there be when these things shall come to pass? And he said, take heed that you be not deceived. Mm -hmm. Most people skip over that. The very first sign of the end. Mm. Oh. Deception. Oh. Deception. Oh. Deception. Yes. Deception. Yes. Truth covering an error. Mm. Truth covering a lie. Mm. Truth covering that which is deceitful uh, or, or to lead astray. I, I love that. I, that. That verse just slaps me in the face yes. every time that I read it. Uh, he said, take heed that you be not deceived. For many shall come in my name. In my very name. Oh, I proclaim the name of the Lord. This is, this is their sign. This is, their, this is their, their word. This is their preaching. The name of the Lord. They come in my name. They come to profess my name saying, I am Christ. I am the anointed one. Mm -hmm. That's what Ooh, shut up. Up. That's what Christ means. The anointed one. How many have I heard about in, in my own short lifetime that have said, I 
and the anointed one. Right. I've read of a number. There are, there are few out there in this generation. I am the anointed one. There is no such thing as the anointed one. There is only one anointed one. Right. His name is Jesus. Whoa, yeah. There is no other anointed one. We can be anointed ones. I would hope to be one of the anointed ones in the body of Christ. And so are you. God wants to anoint every single one of you for your purpose and your place within his house. We all have a role to play. All the way from the feet up to the crown of the head. Everybody has a portion and a part. Diversities of gifts and operations and so forth. But the same head, the same Lord, the same governance, the same spirit yeah. that rules over all. And makes all the... Di See, I can't get off this lesson. See, all the diversities... I can't wait to get to it. <laughs> really myself back in here. <laughs> Back on track. I cannot wait to teach these lessons. Hallelujah. Anyway, that's not where I'm going right now. Not right now. Woo! Saying, I am Christ. And the time draweth near. In other words, oh, it's coming to the end. They use end time rhetoric to put fear on you. Oh, the time is near. Here I'm in the name of the Lord. I'm the anointed one. And we're at the end. So people are like, Oh man, I'm scared to death. End time rhetoric has done more damage wow. to young little lives, yes. children, families. I know families who wouldn't even dare have children because, oh, the Lord's coming in two years. And now it's 50 years later and they have no children, wow. no inheritance. Wow. Because this fear was put on them. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. My Bible tells me that the trump shall sound and the dead of Christ shall be raised incorruptible in the twinkling of an eye. We that are, I know I'm mixing a few scriptures together here, but we that are alive and remain, we shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Don't put a fear on one another yes. with the coming of the Lord. Yes. Comfort. Yes. Comfort one another with the coming of the Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. People walk around, they can't sleep. They've got to pop sleeping pills and, and do all kinds of stuff. Ah, I'm going to miss it. I'm going to miss it. So I'm going to miss it. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Now I will comfort you with the fact that Jesus is coming soon. Jesus wants to prepare His people for His return. He has, a, he has a greater desire for you to be ready than you have to be ready. Amen. He has a greater hunger and a desire for His people. For his bride to be prepared, then you have to be prepared. This is why he draws and he calls and he woos. His banner over you is love. Glory be to God, waving it over you, pushing back as he waves the banner, push back all the haters of light and praise God in the darkness that shine. Clouds our minds and causes us to be blind. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Jesus said right there, when they say that, you know, I'm the Christ, and these, this is the sign of the end. He said, go not therefore after them. Please. Don't follow that spirit. Discern where it's coming from. Discern its origin. Understand Praise God, the purpose, the reasoning behind what is being said. Is it being said to encourage, to uplift, to awaken? Praise God, to bring life? Or is it said to bring bondage and fear and intimidation and manipulation and death? Wow. Big difference. Wow. Same words. Wow. Hallelujah. Different spirit. Praise the name of Jesus. 
Woo! Mm. Oh man. Thank wow. You, Jesus. <laughs> Got all four burners burning in my soul this morning. <laughs> Go to Second Timothy. Run over there quickly. Am I preaching too long? No. no. Second Timothy chapter three. <clears throat> Praise God forevermore. Amen. Oh, Jesus. Ooh, Jesus. Yes, that's what I say. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, indeed. We're going to make it, people. We are yeah. going to... Yeah. 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 Who's shut up high? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Praise God. Oh. We will be ready when the Lord comes. Yes, yeah. yes. Pray. yes we will. Oh. Oh. Praise yeah. the name of the Lord. Oh, man. Yeah. And not because uh, uh, of a fear, but because of a love. Yeah. Yeah. A hunger. Oh, yeah. A desire for Him. Yeah. Yeah. A desire for His presence. Oh. A longing to be with Him. Oh. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Thank okay. Uh, 2 Timothy uh, chapter 3. Let's see. Uh, go to verse uh, 13. Yeah, that's what I want. Let's go to verse 12. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Oh, do I dare read it? Yes. Yeah. And all true. that will live godly in Christ Jesus might suffer a little persecution. Oh, yeah. Ah, thank you, Craig, for helping me. <laughs> they shall. That's a pretty much a promise. Yeah, it is. So claim that promise, people. <laughs> <laughs> they, they shall. We love to claim the promises. <laughs> we seem to always oh. claim that one. Yeah. <laughs> they shall suffer persecution. Oh, oh Lord, help us. Thank you, Lord. And verse 13, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, oh, Lord, that is for sure. deceiving yes. and being deceived. Yeah. See, deceivers deceive because they're deceived. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Amen. The power of deception is deception. Mm. <laughs> That's a good quote, isn't it? Yes. yes. Deceivers deceive because they're deceived. Because the power of deception is deception. They are so deceived themselves that they have no problem feeding you this package right here of deception. He says in the last days, these evil workers will and seducers will wax worse and worse Deceiving and being deceived. Uh, this is a very powerful portion of scripture right here. This word seducer, oh Lord, it means to mutter spells. Oh, wow. Muttering. Wow. This muttering, chanting spells. Oh, wow. Bringing the soul and the spirit of man into bondage. It means an imposter, something that is false. A seducer is an imposter. Praise the Lord. It means, of course, a deceiver. The word deceiving means to cause, listen to this people, powerful, powerful. Uh, they wax worse and worse. Deceiving means to cause to roam from the truth. Yes. Not to leave the truth but to roam from it. In other words, it's still there, but let's just go out here a little bit. Uh, Roaming is like, you know, you can roam around the neighborhood, but you don't leave the neighborhood. Yeah. But you're not in your house. Yeah. You're not where you should be. Because you are a roamer. This is what deception does. It causes you to roam from the truth. Roam away and find little satisfaction down by the pond. Oh my. Oh, Jesus. Yes. It means to go astray. It means to be a wanderer. <laughs> wow. It means to be out of the way, but yet you're close to the way. Oh. See, this is why deception is so powerful. Because the way is there, right. but you're not in it. Yes. But you see it. Yes. It's all this mixture of truth and error yes. that is so prevalent in 
the church today. It's this mixture, this, this Balaam mixture. This doctrine of Balaam, of mixing truth with error. To cause God's people to stumble and to bring a curse upon themselves. No wonder God said, I hate the doctrine of Balaam. I hate the Nicolaitans and the doctrine of Balaam. Praise the name of Jesus. Uh, run over with me quickly to 1 Timothy chapter 4. It says in verse 1, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. Oh, that's a mouthful right there. The Spirit, the Spirit of God speaketh expressly. That word uh, expressly, praise, it means to be outspoken. It means to be distinct. And it means to pour out violently. Wow. The Spirit of God speaks distinctly. In other words, clear cut <coughs> words of wisdom. Yes. The Spirit of God speaks, hallelujah, into our hearts and minds and, and wills and spirits with expressly with a, a violent yes. pour out of the Word and the Spirit of God. The Spirit is speaking. No wonder it says to every church age, he that has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is. But the Spirit is saying to the churches, thank you Lord. That was the message to every church age. They all got that same line. If you got an ear to hear, listen. To what the Spirit is saying to the church is, not to the church, but to every church. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, we're in the last church church, so let's just see what God's saying. No, better listen to what He's saying to every church, because in this very room, all seven churches are present. Mm -hmm. yes. well, in this very room, every one of us, we're somewhere yeah. in our walk with God, dealing with something, overcoming something. Yeah. Hallelujah. What is God saying to us? What is the message that the Spirit of God is speaking and screaming in our ears? Mm -hmm. But here, in this particular portion of Scripture, the Spirit speaketh expressly, outspokenly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Take note of the order of this verse. Yeah. Before seduction comes, there is a departing from the faith. Mm -hmm. What does that even mean? In the latter times, he says, there shall be a departing from the faith. Yes. There are those who will, shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing Spirits or in that word seducing there it is to be an imposter, a misleader, a deceiver, mm. a misguider. Mm. They will give heed to spirits of seduction and doctrines or instructions or teachings or learnings of devils. Mm. Thinking they're hearing and embracing the truth. Mm. That's so heavy. Yeah. Glory be to God. That's heavy. Yes. And if I'm not mistaken, I would say we're in the end times. Yes. Since we are, I think this is very applicable yes. to us. People departing from the faith. That word faith means prior convictions. Yes. Oh my. That's what it means. Oh Prior convictions. Mm. When you leave something, you've got to go to something else. Mm. When you throw something away, you've got to brace something else. Mm -hmm. So my question to the body of Christ is, what have you left to embrace what? Mm -hmm. What has replaced what you have? What has come in the place of departing from something, you've got to go to something else. You can't be just neutral flying around in space. If I let this go or I depart from this, then I've got to go to something else. I don't just live in a sphere of nothingness. They depart 
from the faith, giving heed to. They depart from convictions. They depart from something God has already put in their life. They depart from something that's already real. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. So they depart from that and they go to seduction. This is this is a wide open place for the spirits of Praise God. Somebody shout. Glory to God. Depart from the faith. Depart from what God has convicted you of, convinced you of, put in your soul. And everybody's got their own walk. Don't misunderstand me. I'm not talking about a church or a doctrine or a, I'm talking about your convictions with God. You and God. Yes. Not talking about a theology. I'm talking about your walk with God. Yes. This is what I'm talking about. Yes. And when we deliberately choose ourselves to depart or walk away from the faith or walk away from the very things that God has settled in your soul. You've got to embrace something else. Guess what you're going to embrace? Seduction. Error. Because you can't walk away from truth to truth. It is so powerful. If you walk away from truth, you are walking to error. This is a serious lesson. Yes, it is. I don't want to be deceived. Amen. I want to keep my eyes open. Yes. Thank you, Lord. I, I want this uh, gift of the, the discerning of spirits to be working and operating in me so much so that I can I can walk through things. I can hear things. I can yes. Yes. Uh, the Lord quickens things and makes yes. things come alive and cautions you and brings you awareness. The, the, the one of the major problems I see in the body of Christ today is absolute lack of awareness. We're so unaware. We're, we're unaware of ourselves. <laughs> you can be aware of everybody else and be unaware of you. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's bad. Amen. <laughs> You're unconscious. This is one of our big weaknesses. Wow. Don't ask God to make you discerning about everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. Start to discern you. Yes. Yes. That's good. Your own yes. life. Yes. Your own motives. Yes. Your own heart. Your own spirit. Mm -hmm. Your own longings. Mm -hmm. What is God after in you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Chapter 25. <coughs> this is a powerful portion of scripture. And it shows about departing from the faith. Mm -hmm. This is about Amaziah, the king of Judah. Oh, yeah. Verse 1, Amaziah was 25 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jehoadan of Jerusalem. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. yes. But, not with a perfect heart. Hello. He was so religiously correct. He lived his life and ministry to the T and the letter of the law. He knew the ethics of the law. And he lived by them. Oh, he did. He did all that was right. In the sight of God. But he had a heartless religion. Oh, wow. When his en the enemies that slew his father. He slew them. But he would not slay the children. Because the law says. That the children will, should not die for the sins of the parent. That's how ethically correct he was. Mm. Instead of wiping out the whole family. Which most of the kings did. Mm. Amaziah. Mm -mm, no I'm going to be right. I'm going to do it all the law. I'm going to do exactly 
what I'm told to do, how I'm told to do it, you know, and this is how he lived. But his heart was not involved in his religion. Wow. His heart was not involved in his walk with God and his service to God. It was all legalistic. Come on. Mm. Say that. Hello. Do you know why we depart from the faith? Our heart is not involved. It's easy to lead somebody away when the heart is not involved. And look what happened to this guy. Drop down to verse 14. Now it came to pass after that Amaziah was come from the slaughter of the Edomites. The Edomites were the ancestors of Esau. Esau is a picture of the flesh. The picture of the world. Hallelujah. After uh, Amaziah was come from the slaughter of the Edomites, man, he went out and he took Esau down. Because that was the right thing to do. Hello? I'm going to get rid of that in my life because that's the right thing to do. I'm going to get at that out of my house. That's the right thing to do. I'm going to appear righteous. Because that's the right thing to do. Oh, he went to war against these characters. He had a fight and a battle and he won. But he brought the gods of the children of Seir and he sent them up to be his gods. And he bowed himself down before them and burned incense unto them. In other words, the very thing that he purposed to conquer, conquered him. Oh. Why? Oh, somebody shout. Mm -hmm. ah, mm -hmm. Because his heart was not involved. Mm -hmm. He departed from God. He departed from serving God. He de it all became too heavy for him. Uh -huh. Oh, it's just so burdensome. Yeah. It's so heavy. It's just not nice. It's like, I can't do it anymore. Religious, but no heart. Mm, that's right. And this is what I'm asking God to do Jesus. among us mm. and among His people mm. today. Awaken our hearts. Mm, yes. Don't do what you do for sake of a religion. Amen. Please don't. Walk, walk with God. Walk in your convictions. Walk in the light that God gives you. Don't depart from what God has planted and purposed and brought alive in your soul. Don't depart from it. Hallelujah. We spend, I know, trust me people, I did this. I spent years and years and years warring against the Edomites. And I fought them and I took them down and I got rid of that in my life and I got rid of this in my life and I pushed that aside and I pushed this aside and oh, I'm not going to have that in my house and oh, I'm not going to do that. And, oh, but my heart, oh. I hated every minute of it. Oh. Not every minute. Because I had some good moments yeah. and some powerful times. Mm -hmm. But the weight and the yoke and the burden became so heavy. I was like, oh. that's how I felt. Yes. Wow. Amen. Why? Because the very thing I set out to conquer, conquered me. Wow. Mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Because there was something not going on on the inside. Mm -hmm. I wasn't discerning something. I wasn't seeing something. Something wasn't adding up. Mm -hmm. But thank God for the day when my eyes opened. Yes. And I was able to see more clearer. Mm -hmm. And I don't see I see clearly now. But I see clearer now, yeah. <laughs> hallelujah, than what I did then. That God wants me indeed to conquer the Edomites, but not touch the gods. Mm -hmm. Don't bring them into my life. Don't depart from what God is doing in my heart. It may be baby steps. Take baby steps. Take your time. Mm -hmm. Let God work on you. Hallelujah. You don't have to fulfill a role. You don't have to play a role. Mm -hmm. Just walk with Jesus, will you? Mm -hmm. Find the thrill and the life and the joy of your life with Him. Yes. Oh, oh, Let's all stand and praise His wonderful name. Come on, lift up your voices. Thank the Lord. Yes, come on, praise Him. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him. 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 Praise
Rabba Shabba 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 Shabba